Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Sam here, and today I'm just doing a quick vlog recounting some of my experiences on a little trip to Orpington here. So I did mention before on the channel that I was going to go to the meet and greet hosted by Muscleworks down at Orpington with Sam Sulak, but I didn't do the meet and greet myself because I did meet him on Sunday at the Arnold that I was explaining in the video yesterday. So as I'd planned to go and kept the day and after, well the afternoon free, I thought I would still go and bump into anyone that I know and socialise and just get a feel for the thing because I realised it was going to be a really big event and I just thought I'd take the time today as a vlog to explain how it went and what I think that means for bodybuilding globally and especially in the UK because honestly I've never seen anything like it. Now nothing crazy happened, nothing like that, but really I think what I saw today was indicative of a huge trend and a positive change in a way that I haven't really seen before and so I thought it'd be worth recounting the story. So I'd gone down, I bought the ticket ages ago because my plan was to do um, any kind of any kind of meet and greet with Sam Sulek this Tuesday that would mean that I'd be free to do whatever I wanted at the Arnold's over the weekend just gone in the previous um, three videos but as it turned out I was able to meet Sam on Sunday morning because of being allowed into the expo before the public by the organizers which was very kind of them so I was able to do that Sunday morning get a little picture that I showed yesterday and have a chat before the queues had formed and, and so I thought there's no sense in me queuing <laughs> this huge long line all day for the Tuesday now I've already done that but because I've kept the afternoon free I thought I'd go down and I gave my ticket or sold my ticket to someone who was missing one and was desperate to meet the meet the the man himself so that was handy for me and worked out for someone else so that was kind of a bonus and, and meeting someone very keen to buy that ticket off me but I, I hadn't really thought of selling it I just thought I'm, I won't be waiting through the queue but while I was waiting there I was chatting to loads of people that were there and it was like it was like nothing I'd really seen before you had it, it was like in other sports where you'd have like a father and son like go to a football match or rugby match and stuff like that there were like families there and stuff you got you got a lot of dads or like blokes my age with a young son in tow where the son's like a fan and the dad's like an old gym goer like old school and it's it's an interest that they share and they've gone down together i saw several instances of that which i wasn't really expecting and then there were loads of groups of lads people have traveled from all the way down on the south coast from the midlands i didn't really talk to anyone that had come from far up north i don't um i don't recall so there was kind of less traveling than I expected, but for people that did queue through it, I, I stayed down there for two hours, but I was getting a feeling like it was about a four hour wait because it was that busy. So they got people queuing up all through Muscleworks, Orpington inside and then out the door right into the car park. And I was just chatting to people outside and, and making friends and saw a couple of people that I know already. Um, also one or two people that I met at the weekend. That was cool, but the most striking thing for me was just how like keen and progress orientated and serious about gym stuff these youngsters are. I say youngsters because we're talking sort of age 17 to 23, 24. So kind of the age when you get into this stuff. But I, I know from me being that age and all of my friends when I was younger that we didn't we didn't really like track anything or know for definite what our progress was, at least most of us didn't. And I was speaking to some of these, these guys down there and they were showing me like pictures of their progress in the last two or three months. Well, some of them have made like terrific progress and have only been in the gym for four months. I've never, I've never seen anything like it really in 20 years of being in the gym culture. I've never really seen like people be able to show their progress and explain you know what they are eating and how much they're eating and what training they were doing over a three or four month period and really have something to show for it it's just kind of like muddle on and trial and error for most of us but these kids are really determined and so I think 
Whether it's a broader phenomenon or it is mostly centered around Sam Sulak, I think it's something I haven't really, haven't really seen. I could say, you know, the word influencer is a bit cringe, but I could genuinely say that, that Sam Sulak is really an influencer in a positive way and is like influencing all of these people coming through now. I mean, obviously, like, he's prodigiously <laughs> well developed. I think he's only just turned 22 years old and he's you know he's very muscular so he's made an awful lot of progress but the influence that that's had on all of these young lads that are getting into gym it is not really something i've seen before where they were all then there to a meet and greet like that i mean maybe it was like that like back in the 90s or like when you know british bodybuilding would be like the success of dorian yates and stuff like that maybe someone could tell me in the comments someone who's been a long time follower of all this longer than me but I haven't personally seen that where you'd have that many hundreds of people turn out all of that age group and be able to show that kind of progress and that be the norm and them really aspiring to get into this kind of thing I've, I've not seen that much popularity of this stuff or that much seriousness in it which is which is funny because sometimes you know part of the personal brand or gimmick or kind of trolling for for a bit of traction in the first place with Sam Sulek was the sort of anti-science and the ego lifter persona and, and stuff like that. I've got no problem with that. I think that there's an element of truth to it and that's why it's funny and it's, it, it's made him an interesting character. But I think it's ironic that that's the character that he started off portraying, but then the end result is actually <laughs> youngsters t taking this more seriously and actually more scientifically than they would have done otherwise if they hadn't encountered all of his stuff so not really what I was expecting to see I knew it'd be busy but I wasn't really expecting to see how serious people apparently were and how interested they were in learning and I got in all sorts of conversations and talking about my experiences getting you know getting asked all sorts of questions about every element of this but um, I didn't get too far into too many topics because it's all covered on the on the channel obviously so you know if you want to delve into specific things I, I suggest you consider subscribing because I'm covering everything here from you know meal preps and diet planning and PDs training routines my journey and workouts all of that stuff that's all all in here and all continuing daily but I ended up realizing that a lot of people are taking a very methodical you know scientific you could say approach to trying all different things with what ratios of, of the different macronutrients they're using, which choices for proteins and carbohydrates that they're using in their diet, and, and they, they're well aware of the different training philosophies and experimenting with them, talking about it and comparing. And you, you know, there's, there's always been people that are into this stuff, but I think what I haven't seen is that many people of that sort of age group that are that into it that methodically and apparently that successfully from progress photos that lots of these lots of these um, keen individuals were were eager to show me I was yeah I was really impressed and I think I'm quite excited about what that may mean for the future that may mean that bodybuilding will be more competitive and more high quality in the years to come as all of these people assuming that they stick with it and don't get distracted or move on to the next cool thing or or whatever whatever proportion of them stick with it will you sort of come through into their more developed form in the coming years and i think why that might be particularly significant to british bodybuilding comes from a comment i did see on from Sam Sulek on his channel. He did mention in one of the videos a few weeks ago that according to his YouTube analytics, a quarter of his audience are in the UK. So when you think of the population difference between here and um, countries in North America, well, Canada and the USA, that means that an awful lot is going on in the UK with bodybuilding, I think we look at the kinds of gyms that are opening now. I think all of this, I know, you know, Sam Sulek is one person, but I think all of this, so, you know, maybe it's partially caused by 
the lockdowns and people getting more engaged and into things on the internet has given rise to more kind of interaction and more of a culture on the internet and more online coaching and the gyms that, that are springing up. I think it's all part of the same kind of gym culture movement that is really positive to be honest. It's really something that I think could see globally but especially in the UK make bodybuilding way more competitive and way more fun. So all these people, you know, mostly come like in groups of friends and they're mostly, you know, mostly like seems to be their main passion in life, I, I got the feeling it was. And I'm, I'm really excited to see how this plays out. I think probably in about five to six, five, you know, maybe five, five to seven years, we'll see the result of this come through. But I think, you know, another thing that's indicative of this new culture or the growth of this thing is what I see with the federations in the UK and how oversubscribed basically their contests that are aimed at beginners are. So you got PCA and they are doing, you know, probably half a dozen first timers events, if not more this year. And they're getting sold out, you know, all the spaces booked on them for all the classes months in advance, in advance some of them. And th this is not how it was years ago. So, you know, maybe, maybe there's a catalyst before all of this or you know before the lockdowns and people getting more into stuff on the internet and before Sam Sulak and maybe you know maybe ultimately the catalyst for it is Instagram becoming kind of universal for anyone interested in anything I suppose or some other kind of catalyst to it or some other things that have laid the groundwork for it that aren't really coming to my mind at the moment within the last 10 years but we're, we're seeing something happen here and I think it's only really started to become clear to me after what I've seen today. As I continue to think about it, there's all sorts of other things that would seem to be either a symptom or an indicator of this going on. I think of there being more and more successful clothing brands that are in it, you know, more and more content on the internet that people are still watching, which is obviously great for me, or maybe it's more and more expectations that you can do what you want with your body. Maybe it's also, you know, connected to what they've done with classic physique and the different categories that something that's more desirable to more people has given a platform for bodybuilders that would have always been more popular but wouldn't have been visible before these categories were invented because they wouldn't have been successful in the open or, um, or similar before anything else existed. So you have obviously Chris Pumstead and all of the other popular classic ones that seems to be what a lot of people want to want to look like or harkens back to something, maybe a more conditioned, detailed version of the, the kind of shape and proportions that were more were more like the the seventies and early to mid eighties, which seems to be seems to be when there was a previous you know jump forward in popularity i think people forget now just how influential arnold was in the gym culture and they end up ending up being resistance equipment weights free weights machines in gyms all over the place and that that's only expanded and i think you could sort of say that the pumping iron era and the golden era and arnold was all kind of the zeitgeist or the time where all of the real life stuff proliferated around the world and what I mean by that is the physical things like the, the gyms and the supplements and the, um, the barbells and the machines and muscle visible in like the old media like films and stuff like that and what you could say is going on now is like the the digital revolution of it or the digital jump forward so when i think about who's successful on youtube with this kind of content that that's only really been popular in the current form and the way that it works in the last seven to eight years maybe and that's sort of the same period of time where very fast reliable internet has been on all the smartphones so it's kind of 
the digital side of, of this proliferating everywhere has gone hand in hand, I suppose, with internet being fast and in your pocket and on demand everywhere, which is, I guess has really only been the case for the last 10 years. That it's that it's been you know that reliable and that that fast for you, you know universally people had the people had like the first decent smartphones sort of 14 15 years ago so I guess it being reliable and universal was was more like 10 to 12 years ago and then the platforms have come on from there and I think you could say that that's kind of the the base of a digital enablement of all of that side of it spreading with you know content creation youtubers instagram more lately tiktok and you know people looking to interact and, and learn and work on something in a, in a different form which was also spurred on by everything getting more of a digital push that came from the lockdowns in 2020 so then you know, just before or alongside of that, you've seen the expansion of online coaching, you know, which goes hand in hand with content creation and stuff like that. So I think I'd almost go so far as to say that the influence of Sam Sulek, if you could say that what, what Arnold was to spreading muscle in the old media and the, the physical world, you could almost say that Sam Sulek has the potential to be kind of like the Arnold of like the digital day. I would really go as far as to see that, say that based on you know the popularity that I've seen with him on the weekend at the Arnold Classic and today down down at that gym and just how inspired these these young men are. And it's, you know what, it's actually really exciting to, to be part of because I think in the old way it still would have been less accessible to, to people because you'd still have to kind of get to a gym or know someone in person or, or be coached in person and we weren't all so connected that it wasn't as universally accessible. Whereas when I think about some of my content and how with what I can do with YouTube very easily and put online straight away and, and interact with people all over the world straight away, how, how we can show for free and quickly and in you know, decent enough quality videos what can be done with home workouts, with dumbbell only workouts as I've shown in some of my videos or uh, your own meal preps, your own diet planning and how quickly that information can be spread, that all of, all of that teaching can be done for free and instantaneous and, and demonstrated like on video as I do with meal preps and workouts in a way that doesn't come to life in the same way as, as with a book, which is the way that I learned everything. That I think I really wanted to make a vlog today to kind of capture like my thoughts on all this as it's happening because I think when I look at the history of bodybuilding and books like Muscle Smoke and Mirrors I always recommend and how, how it you know catalogues everything that happened through all the, all the old times so if I think about what's going on now in the digital it's it's really something that I felt like I needed to make a con what's the word quantum I'm going to look it up I really need to get the exact right word that I mean for this a contemporaneous record of all this happening and kind of just to show what it was like being involved in it as it was happening having gone down and met all these people over over the weekend just gone and today down at Orpington so any opportunities to be part of this and record this and see all this kind of thing as it happens and expands. I think I definitely want to be part of. And yes, I didn't see the need to queue up today to meet Sam Sulek um, again, because I was very lucky on Sunday. I expect that we'll see these meet and greets get even more well attended as, as he seems to be still growing exponentially. And I wish him all the best. 
I think <laughs> I think what what he's done you know maybe 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 he sort of had a strategy at the start of it maybe he didn't but I don't think he could have predicted quite how influential he'd end up end up being in all of this so that's all of my thoughts on today I will get back in the gym I promise I have rather a lot of work to catch up on this evening but thank you for listening if you've made it this far and if you'd like to share some of your experiences or thoughts on these kind of things I look forward to talking to you in the comments so just put your thoughts below <laughs>